This week, we're gonna take a look at using Nomad to create a seal to do wax seals. So we're not gonna print it in metal or anything crazy like that. So we only need it in a normal 3D print resin, but we're gonna do all the work in Nomad and then send it over to a slicer and then we'll 3D print it and get some seals going and see how they turn out. So let's dive right in and take a look. So before we start making the seal, we need a, a shape or a, a design. So I'm going to use my logo um, and we need to switch over to Procreate. This is a 2D package. I use it for, you know, most of my 2D work now is done in Procreate. But any 2D package will do it, whether it's on the iPad or not. Take your design, make sure it's black and white and make sure that you've got some space around it. So don't clip it closely like this. So make sure there's lots of space around it so that you, when we when we use that uh, as a stamp, it's gonna have nothing to, to cloud that, that really clean white shape in the middle. And then export it, so I'll do save JPEG. I won't save it, but I'll just show you how to do it. Go iPad on your iPad, Nomad and Alphas, and save it in there. And if you don't do that, it won't appear in Nomad. You must now reboot Nomad. And when you come back from that reboot, you'll find that down in your, um, if you look, if you do any of the tools that support an alpha, you'll see at the bottom of it, um, there's, the, there's the logo that you've put in, the little shape down there. So now you've got that, that's ready for when we're, we, we, we want that. So we're going to make a cube. So let's just delete what we've got in there. We don't need this sphere. And we'll just use primitive uh, box and you can use any shape you want. This is just quite useful, I find. Um, what you can do is you can change the shape a little bit. So if you go to box geometry, turn off um, the same size and just change it as you see fit. So what we'll do is we'll just make it a little bit taller and a little bit less depth on it. You do want a chunk because you, just in case you decide to uh, push right into the, to, to the model at, at some point, we're going to pull out of the surface for this, but there is the option there. Validate it. You can do this on a plane. You can do it on a disc. It doesn't really matter. It's just geometry. But what I will say is you need high resolution. So I'm going to push it up. This is an iPad uh, 2020. So this has got six gig of RAM and it's quite a, quite a chunky iPad. So I'm quite happy to go up to like five or six million polygons for this. So now I've got a block that's going to that's going to take the shape. So I need the next tool along, which would be the stamp tool. And if you come here to your um, on the other side and look at the stroke, and it's a stroke stamp, down under fall off, you've got lots of options. You can click in the middle there, and it'll give you these shapes down below for, for, for the profile of the, of the stamp we're going to use. But we don't want that. We want to make our own. So we'll go custom. And then you want to make a shape like this. So basically bring it down in the middle and flat towards the edges. What that's going to give you is like a tabletop effect. So it means that what we pull out of the surface will have a nice flat top. So that, that's all you need to do there. Uh, actually, that's not true. You need to do one more thing. So to here at the bottom, it says front facing vertex only. Switch that on. And it means it should only affect um, uh, things from the front. More more usable, uh, more, more useful for when we are sculpting thin things. But it's always advisable to turn it on just in case. Okay, my panels are staying open, by the way. I have to say this all the time because if you go top right, I've got this on close panel, in, on, close panel on interaction. It's actually switched off. And that means my panels are staying open for you so that you can see what I'm using. So we've got, let's just remind ourselves, we've got stamp. We've got the stroke effect set. And now we want the alpha. So we pick the alpha, which is the shape that we've made. And all we have to do is simply click and drag it onto the surface like that. Now, straight away, you can see the error. So double finger tap to undo the error. We had symmetry left on. So make sure that doesn't happen. And just double check that you don't have sub on. Because if you do sub, you'll get that, which is an indent in the surface. Now, that is useful for lots and lots of things. Um, you know, you might want to at some point do do a lot of that kind of work. But for this, we need it to come out of the surface. So we're going to use sub off. Go up to camera top and then we'll go orthographic, which is, means there's no perspective being used. And we will use snap and then add a view. 
we'll delete that previous view because we don't need it. Why do we add a view? It means we can always go back to that now. So whatever angle we go to, if we just hit that view, it comes back to where we want it to be. And then simply just drag it on the surface. So let's just do quite a big one and see what happens, see if it's good enough. Don't want to go too far because it starts to warp. I don't know whether you can see that, but the, the it starts to slide off like that. And based on the surface normals. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the settings a, bit, a little bit, the intensity, go back here. And remember, we've got this view, snap it. You can do it from the bottom menu here. Uh, there's a snap here as well, which will flip from the back to the front. Uh, but we don't need it. We'll just take it again, even lower in the intensity, and then just drag it on the surface. And don't go too big this time. Doesn't matter what how you line it up, as long as you get it to come out of the surface enough. That's probably not enough, so I'll go back up again. Snap the view, and we'll do it one more time, just see what we get. And just before it starts to deform, that will do it. Now, snap it again, so it's snapped on the side. Go to your gizmo and just use the blue one and just extend it up a little bit. It will stretch it a bit, but at this point, don't worry about that. And then over to the tools again, and we'll just use trim and then flip off and then just snip it away like that. And it should leave us with the logo. So what, what we're left with, if we hit view so we can rotate it around, is we've got our logo nicely clipped out now. So we've got the shape that's going to be our seal done and dusted. So that's quite a, a good start for us straight away. We now need to make the barrel of the seal. So we'll just add in a couple of things. So we'll go to um, up to our primitives. And what we need is two things, actually. So we need a cylinder. And the cylinder can be about the size that it is, actually. So maybe let's just see how big it is in relation to the logo. Yeah, we'll have to change the logo a little bit. Um, but we'll just... Bring that down to a, to a smaller size, like so. Leave it in the center for the, for the next reason that I'm about to show you. So we will subdivide it a couple of times. So it's gonna go up high resolution as well. And then we want to add in something else, which is a torus. And the torus, to change that, what we need to do is change the outer radius down and the inner radius down as well so this is a ring around our our logo um so and, and then we've got two different things that we want to do to this so i'm going to bring it down to the surface like so just change the scale until we get it quite right and i'll actually extrude it up well so not extrude it but stretch it up a little bit and embed it 50 percent into the surface like so now all we do go take the logo come to the side Snap it, rotate it around. In fact, we can scale it up a little bit more. Rotate it around with the red ring. And then we need it embedded in the surface. So we'll just get it level. Bring it down. Scale it up a little bit. I'm just doing this by hand. It's not, it's not, I'm not worried too much about it being accurate. And then halfway into the surface. And then scale it up again, the orange ring on the outside. I want it to nearly meet the, the ring, like so. And that would be about where we'd want it to be. And that is the essence of what we're going to do. So there's a couple of things now before we proceed. It depends on whether you want your seal to be an indent or a, or a, a raised surface. So if we use that and printed that now, what you would get is... Uh, uh, um, the this ring and this logo would give you uh, the the indent into the wax. So we could save that now, which which I will actually do. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So I'm just using, I'm just extending it on the green uh, with the green square, and that means it's slightly higher. And I will change the outer radius a tiny tiny bit just to bring it down a bit, and the inner radius. I'm just making it a little bit fatter. That's all. There you go. And then we'll just tweak the logo the same. It's a tiny, tiny tweak, just so it's closer to the edge. Oh, it's too far now. There we go, just to the edge. 
and then what we'll do is we will export that one. So you go export, it's going to be quite high res, so we will have to bring it down in another program, usually, depending on which way we, we, we slice it. But we'll go to um, export, and we'll just use OBJ and export it. Now, the other way, the, the way that I, um, I, I'm thinking I would want this, this done, really, is to have it removed from the seal. So we need to take the seal at high res, which we've done. And that's, this is where it's important to look at your scene menu. And so we've got the cylinder here, which will move to the top. And then the next thing down is the logo. So we've got to think how deep in do we want it. So we'll go like that halfway. We'll make that um, invisible and then hit the two ticks and then we'll just use voxel merge but I want it really high resolution at this point so we'll hit voxel merge M multi resolution will be lost which is fine and what that's going to do now that's going to carve out the logo from the block and that's exactly what we want to do because now when we press that into the wax that's going to give us a raised logo and now we need to do the same for this so we've got the cylinder on the top and we've got the torus on the bottom, so we'll make the torus invisible, make sure both are ticked, and we hit voxel high res and voxel merge. And that'll do exactly the same again. And that then gives us that completely clipped out as well. It might be a little bit too deep actually there, so if you feel that it is too deep, just simply use the green button and the whole thing will, will go lower now. So you could basically at this point, you, you could choose the depth that you want, which is which is how I would suggest you do it. Um, this is the one we're going to use the most, so I'm just going to add one extra component. So I'm going to ha add a handle. So I'm just going to go cylinder, scale that down, keep it rounded like that because it looks quite, quite okay. Scale it down and leave it embedded in the back like that. And that'll give you something to hold on to when you stamp it into the surface. So... That's pretty much what we're going to print. So now we would just validate that one and then we'll export that and then we'll see what the resolution comes out like and then we'll send it to a, a slicer. So I use either Chitterbox, which is this one, uh, Chitterbox 1.6, I think it is, and either this or there's a newer one on the market called Lychee Slicer, which is, is very similar, but with it being new, it might, it might well suit you a little bit better. It might have more features. Um, you could hollow these things out, but as I'm going to cast these eventually, I'm, I'm not massively bothered and they're only quite small anyway. So I just go and leave them completely solid. I just angle them so that, that, that when the supports are added, they just come up um, for, in, a, in a nice angle. And there's plenty of videos online if you don't understand how to do this, but it's, it, it's such a simple operation. You're always just making sure that the supports you're adding support everything from underneath. So there's no underhangs that aren't supported um, and just running that that little slide there just allows you to see whether the, there's any problems I then print it I'm going to use on this particular job I was using a an Elegoo Mars Pro so it's a nice little resin printer very very cheap it's only a couple of hundred quid in the UK uh, print them out. Um, I had a couple of print fails on the on the first go, so this is this is one that came out well. And as you can see, it's a nice solid little print with no damage on the face whatsoever, which which means it'll print really really well. I always then throw it through this, which is a curing station. You don't necessarily need this, but this bakes off any any resin that isn't cured. And then it's just a case of heating up some wax. Um, I, now there's there's two thoughts about this. You you could literally. Um, go ahead and cast this uh, stamp into metal or the seal into metal or, or either a metal or a metal resin. But I found that it works absolutely fine, apart from the fact that it's not that cold, whereas the metal is usually cold and it solidifies the wax. But you can get great results just from using the print, as you can see. I hope you're enjoying this kind of content and if you are please give the video a thumbs up it really does help us to get in front of other artists in the future if you do like what we do make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell down below so that we can let you know when we release all of the new content which is normally on a wednesday and a friday have a great week everyone